Look away unto Jesus and say, Lord, because you have died on that cross, I am capable of receiving everything that cross has purchased for me. And sometimes God speaks over us and we're not willing to listen to wisdom. All of this is available to us. There's all of this good, awesome kingdom glory. Got your Bibles. We're going to Matthew chapter 21. Let's keep the Word of God going into our lives. Amen. Uh, remember the word Amy gave, uh, humble yourself, read the Bible, and see what God says to you. Humble yourselves, read the Bible, see what God says to you. I'm in the Word of God. The Word of God is true. The Word of God ought to be the basis of every household, every marriage, every government, every nation, every people. Even in your business, the Word of God should be the guide for your business. Because the Word of God is the basis of how everything was created. Everything works because of the Word of God. So I just encourage you to believe the Word of God. Matthew chapter 21. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Acts chapter 19. I'm, gonna say, I'm in the wrong place. Acts 19, if you would. We're going to have to move through this quickly. I need my phone. So in Acts 19, the Apostle Paul is revealing some pretty powerful truths to us here. And we're going to start in verse 1. I want to talk about receive when you believe. Receive when you believe. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. And finding some disciples. Could you say disciples? disciples. Okay, so this is just not lost people. These are people who are trusting God, following God. They just hadn't received the fullness yet. And he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, We have not as much heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. Okay, so what's important about the scripture you've got to understand, because it's not very apparent when you first look at it, but the only people in the New Testament that were ever called disciples were people that Jesus called out. Okay? They had to be people who... They heard the word of God, they came into Christ, they were born again, okay? There's nobody called disciples that wasn't in direct communion with Jesus Christ. Now, I understand that the early disciples in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were not born again, but they were in covenant through Christ while still under the law, awaiting through faith for him to fulfill what he promised them. He says, I'm making you clean by my word. So they were in like a dispensation, a time where even though he hadn't died yet and he didn't spill his blood yet, they were cleansed by his word. His word was cleansing them. So they were in a state of ability to serve God and to do his will. He sent them out two by two, all 70, into different places. And uh, they were ministering in those places, driving out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. They were doing all kinds of things because they were made clean by his word. So other than that case, Everybody in the New Testament, from the book of Acts on, who's called a disciple, always was a born-again believer, a person who had faith in Jesus Christ. So I want you to know that this is what this is talking about. These are not just Jews uh, who are under the law. These are disciples, okay? So he says, finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said, we have not as much heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. Now, you shouldn't read this in your thinking because we're in a modern contemporary age now. And when you say Holy Spirit today, people have certain thoughts that hit them. But they were in that period of time when the only God they knew was God. Right. You understand? Yeah. The one true God, Jehovah. And so they had no reference of a Jesus God, they had no reference of some Holy Spirit God or any of these ideas that come into your mind. So you're, what happens is because we've been trained by our modern age, we interpret the Bible in the way the Bible doesn't speak. So I want you to reread this with me and let's just read what it actually says because this is how they would have heard it. They would not have understood the Holy Spirit. They would not have understood that. That would have been like a foreign idea to them. And it says... Um, in the regions of Ephesus, finding some disciples, he said to them, did you receive the Hagios Pneuma when you believed? Now they would have said, they would have understood this. 
the sacred breath of God. Did, when you believed in Jesus Christ, did you receive the sacred breath of God? The essence of God. Did you receive that when you believed Jesus Christ? And they were like, we haven't even heard whether there be a Hagios Pneuma. So I want you to know, there were disciples during that period of time who had not yet been brought to full instruction in understanding of what they could receive when they believe. Right. Oh boy, I hope you heard that. It's important for us to know what's available to us when we believe. Right. They could have received the Spirit then, but they didn't receive it because they didn't know what was available to them when they believed. Now, it doesn't make sense to me that, that there could be people sitting here right now or people in our lives who have heard the gospel preached, they've heard about the Spirit, they've heard about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they've heard about the manifestation of the gifts of God, they've heard about the Spirit manifestation through people's lives, and yet they don't operate in it. So a lot of times, people don't operate because they don't understand what's available to them when they believe. It's important to know what you can receive when you believe. Yes. Yep. Yeah, what it says, right? That's what it says. That's really important. So this is where study comes in. And I think it's important to study the preacher. It's important to study the Bible. It's important to study believers. When I see someone manifesting in a gift, I immediately start studying them. Like... Uh, you know, today, there was a, 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 a powerful manifestation right here in our presence. Were you studying it? I mean, Katrina, when she was singing that song, that was an incredible manifestation of the Spirit pushing through her spirit. Wow, it was just like, you know, what? And I, I lifted my head up and looked at her, I was like, what in the world is that? You understand? There's an impartation coming through her spirit. It was like, whack, it was coming through there like crazy. Now, I can tell you what that is, because I've, I've lived long enough to, to see it over and over and over. People who bow their knees in their heart to God have these manifestations. That's where it comes from. The reason I have no fear of you about when I preach, when I say things that are absolutely explosive and, and mind-numbing kind of statements from the Bible is because I have no fear of you because in my heart, my knees are bowed. Red. That's why. Really I, I have bowed knees in my heart. The, the, when it says they worshiped him, it doesn't mean they started saying, oh, Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. It doesn't mean that. It means that they bowed they bowed in their heart. They were bowing to him. Oh, Lord, you are the only true God. You know, they, they were like, you are him. And there's a reverence. There's, a, there's something that takes place to the heart, to the person whose knees bow in front of God inside. When you bow inside, the outside's not a problem. And I notice when people are preaching, sometimes people preach from their head. You can hear it. It's just it's head, 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 head. It's coming right out of the head. I'm not saying we don't use our brain. I study the Bible so I know where scriptures are so that I can make reference to them when I'm speaking. And then periodically God gives me references beyond what I remember. Okay. But I have to study. I have to prepare my mind. So I'm not saying throw your brain away, but there's something that goes beyond the head. A teacher... A teacher of the Bible is filled with scriptures and connecting scripture to scripture, and connecting Old Testament to the New Testament, this prophet to that manifestation in the New Testament. They, they've got all these things logged in their soul. They're not just talking off their notes or their paper. They're, they're bringing out of their study the preparation of their mind. That's true. But a good teacher is not stuck in his mind. He's prepared himself so that the Spirit can flow through his bowed need heart. Yeah, right. You understand? It's, it's something that comes out of you. Yeah. It's within. It's within. Yeah. And I noticed people who struggle with um, manifesting their gifts, because, man, it's as obvious as anything to me, some of the gifts on people, and they can't get them out. The, the gift doesn't seem to get out. It doesn't seem to wake, work its way out correctly. It's because the knees aren't bowed sufficiently. That's the only reason. There's no other reason. 
you know, you, there's practice, I understand, of getting used to something because we're natural people as well as spiritual people. I, I'm with you on that. But the fact of the matter is, the knees, when the knees bow, the words and the language comes from the Spirit. Yeah. It comes out because right. the Spirit anoints it. So when, when Katrina was manifestly bowing her knees and her heart to God through the ministry of that song, I study that. So what I want, I want to gain constant fear of the Lord, recognition and acknowledgement of what's real before God. At one point, Eve was leading a song, and I could shut my eyes, and I started to throw my arm like this, and I thought, what am I doing? But I could feel something. I looked up, and Eve was doing it, and I thought, oh my gosh, we're both doing it. And uh, there's, there's a spirit realm. There's a spirit realm. This church is going somewhere. We need to learn how to bow our knees. Okay, so here's when the knees bow. So when you come in, and we're like distracted with life and things and people, and hey, how you doing? And there's a kid playing next to you, and there's noise, and there's stuff, or you're back there, and they're walking in and out of you, past you. You know, and you're, you're trying to focus, but the focus isn't there. It really isn't about what's happening around you. It's about what's happening inside of you. It's about what's in here. It's, can you say it's in here? It's in here. You, you've got to get your knees down so that God can flow through you no matter what situation. You can be chained to a prison wall like Paul and Silas. You, you can be bound there, but their knees and their heart went down under the most excruciating thing. They said, sing praises to God. No orchestra, no keyboard, no guitars, no nothing. They started singing. They probably didn't sound very good, but God heard that thing coming out of their heart. And, and, and all of a sudden, God was pleased and shook the prison and let them out. See, the anointing breaks the yoke. Not good songs. Have you ever heard songs that aren't so good, but with the anointing hits them, you go past the song. You're into another dimension. I, and I, I forever will say, you know, when I was in Australia one time, Steve Smith started playing Mary Had a Little Lamb. I can't believe it. I just got him preaching at a tent meeting in Australia, in Perth, Australia, and he's on the keyboard, and he starts playing, Mary had a little lamb, and he's singing, <laughs> and the anointing was just oozing, <laughs> hitting that place, and people were falling out, bang, it was like, what the, that's amazing, Mary. because it wasn't out of air, it was something in his heart, his knees bowed, and all of a sudden, we're right through the keys, and started hitting people. Yeah. We can go to the next level. Yes. Boy, you must not have heard that very well. Now, some of you want to be leaders, yet your mouths are shut often. I'm going to tell you something right now. You're never going to be a leader in this church unless your mouth is amen and in this house. You're never, you're never going to be a significant person in this house unless you can agree with what God is saying among us. Unless you get past yourself and your knees hit the floor, you're never going to be in charge of something in this house. Never. Because my knees are down, and I'm only going to promote those whose knees are down. Because the people are dying. The people are crippled. The people are doing drugs. The people are committing suicide. We need ministers who know their God and can do something about it. We have to have an experience in this house. Part of the experience in this house rising is me chasing some people out. Part of it is because the hindrance of what God's trying to do is not going to help us get there. Oh, gee. Yeah. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. You get it? Do I have to kiss you? <laughs> yeah, he's moved back. He's moved back. <laughs> you understand? Look, if you want to lead in the house of God, then you've got to lead in the house of God. Yeah. Right. Wow. See, I tell you, I'm so brilliant. I just said... It's like that was beyond my mind. That was like right out of here. If you, if you want to lead in the house of God, you got to lead in the house of God. If you're walking and no one's fouling, you're a man taking a walk. Yeah. Okay. That's right. That's it. Katrina was leading. Yeah. Eve was leading. 
There was some, Amy got up and she was leading. There was something coming out of that spirit. And I'm telling you now, each one of you have a gift, each one of you have a tongue, each one of you have a hymn, have a song, have a, an ability. You have something in God. But until your knees hit the turf, until your knees and your heart hit the, hit the pavement, you're just going to be a normal you putting through your scripture, memorized scripture block. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And a person goes, yeah. you witness the people and it's like, boom, falls. Nobody seems to listen to me. I wonder why. Yeah. We don't talk to people out of here. Right. They got too much of that. They're overloaded with that. They need somebody that feels something in the Holy Ghost to say, Jesus loves you. I tell you, it doesn't even take a lot of words. But when the right moment comes and day two comes and you're standing there going, Jesus still loves you. <laughs> and the person, man, they're breaking. Why? Because somebody's knees are down. Somebody's looking in the spirit realm to God. Somebody's saying, you're bigger than a hospital. You're bigger than a staff. You're bigger than my job. You're bigger than the constraints of this life. It's time, high time even, to get moving for God. Some of you, I, I just feel like I got to kick you. <laughs> Lately, I just feel like give you a kick in the butt. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Do you know, our worship in this house, you say, well, it's so great. It is wonderful, but it's pitiful compared to where we're going. There's coming a time. I have seen it already. I've seen it already. Young men and older men standing here, and we, you, and I see the whole crowd just heaving before God, and there's no reserve. There's no reserve. Everybody's going for God. We're all out for Jesus. We don't care who we offend or who likes us or doesn't like us. We're going to glorify God so much, the outbreaks of the Holy Spirit are going to hit them on their way out the door. They get arrested, and they come back in. We don't want a good country club church. <laughs> this used to be a country club. We're not a country club church. Come on, tell your mouth to be happy. Just tell your face to be happy. Some of you scowl, you scowl. No, stop scowling. You say, well, I'm not scowling. Well, if I see a scowl and I tell you you're scowling, you're scowling. You just don't know it. If you see me do it, say, Pastor, everything's good. Thank you. Got it. We've got to lift ourselves by bowing our knees to God. Come on, I am not some normal white collar pastor. I'm a blue collar pastor. I am. I'll jump in the ditch and dig it with you. Amen. Amen. Vic, I don't want you to do anything I wouldn't do. So you don't have to be afraid. <laughs> you don't have to be afraid. Oh, I just, you know, this guy showed up at my house one day and he goes, I want to be baptized right now. We're in a leaders meeting. I was like, it's October. And it wasn't like this October. I mean, this is back. No, it was October. Yeah, it was October. It was freezing. There wasn't ice on the, on the, on the swimming pool, but and I said, you want to be baptized? Right? He goes, I got to be baptized right now. He's all right, come on, let's go. And I jumped in that pool. <laughs> they looked at the leaders. I go, anybody coming in? <laughs> and then he jumps in. And I put him out there. And when he came out, he was like, ah! I did I thought, is that the spirit or is that the water? We won't be stopped. We won't be stopped. If, if in Greenland they can do it for fun, I can do it for God. Some of you people still have too much of your own will in your own life. You know, Chris Lindbergh from uh, Manning, Canada there, he... He just sent me a picture of the meal he just sat down to eat in India. He's there now. And it was a little bit of meat. And then there was, looked like spinachy rice or spinachy uh, salad with stuff in it. And I zoomed in closer. And they were in there. Oh. Uh, those little bugs. 
You can see me after the, I'll show you the picture after the service if you want. And that was what they gave him to eat. He goes, mm, eat whatever's set before you. Yeah. Now me and God, my knees are down. And I know there's power in the word of God. And you can sit there and say no all you want. But I'm telling you something right now. The day you step past the self and get to the spirit calling on your life, things start manifesting out of your life that can't be stopped. Because I believe the word over my own upbringing. It says you don't eat those things. In fact, if you stick around long enough, you can get bold about it. We were in Seychelles, they, I heard they eat, ate the bats. They were huge bats flying around in the daytime. They were that big. Big bodies like that, and they had faces. They look at you when they're flying by. You can see them look at you. Like, hey, that's a flying, that's a flying monkey. <laughs> and they're all hanging there. They says, hey, we eat those. I said, you eat those? That's disgusting. And I so then they, they said, they only eat fruit. Their meat is clean. I go, all right, come on, let's have a bat. Let's eat it. So then you can even get to the point where you get bold where you say, I want to try it. Yeah. Now Margie's sitting there going, um, Chris, sorry, you don't have to ask for this. But, <laughs> but I thought we were literally going to sit there and eat. Now they were flying around this big tree right above us above the restaurant. We're sitting there and we weren't going to eat. Now I didn't know what I thought we were going to eat. I was looking at the menu. I was looking, I was looking at the bat stuff. I was going to eat it. How are you going to have another experience in your life if you won't liberate yourself from the limited things you've experienced? Okay, so I give you some examples. You don't have to eat bat. You don't have to eat the little critters in the salad. You can leave it out, and the glory that God would have given to you for obeying his word, I'll take. But I'd rather that we distribute this thing further than just a few. Now, I think you've got some great leaders in this house. I think that our worship team is, they're firing. They're firing. There's something special there. They're firing. And I think that your leadership it means business. I think Breakthrough Sunday is not coming because we are sitting around not succeeding. God is speaking over us because he's entrusting us with something greater. It's right in front of us. Now, can we quickly go through this real quick? Oh, yeah, I got like very limited seconds here. It says in uh, Acts chapter 19. It says, so then finding some of these disciples, he says, when you receive the Holy Spirit, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They didn't know they could receive a sacred essence of God. They didn't know that. He says, we have not so much as heard whether there be a sacred essence. And he said to them, into what then were you baptized? They said, only into John's baptism. So these guys got baptized into John, and then they must have came to faith to become disciples, and here they are. They didn't receive the fullness of what they could have. It's amazing to me. And it says, uh, then Paul said, John indeed baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who was to come after that. Uh, that is on Jesus Christ, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Hagios Numa came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Yeah. All right, we got to get back to this point. Yeah. We are not there fully. We got to get back to the point, this point where when we lay hands at people, they don't just go, a shundable. A me, a my, a shundable, a me, a my, 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 and it, it's it. And then you're kind of like, boom, and then they become conscious. That the power of God comes to such a degree yeah. 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 that their knees hit the deck yeah. and they start to prophesy over the church the moment you start laying hands on them, they're thinking tongue. The, the anointing has got to shift to a higher place. God wants to promote this house. Yeah. And it's going to take the people's cooperation. This is why I'm preaching this. I hope you can hear it. Some of you, if you could just bow your knees more often and a little quicker, please. Because, <laughs> like, you watch. I, I look around sometimes. I'll be like, oh, man, you can feel this thing's ruck is coming. I look around. It's like, be like, selling some coffee. By the way, keep the coffee out of here. And it's just, you know, and they're clapping, and they're not even singing to God. It's like they're spotted through all the place. Now, look, there's always going to be new people coming. I'm not talking about new people. If you're new, peace, peace. 
But I'm talking to the disciples. Are you disciples? Well, there's something else you could receive if you would have known you could have it when you believed. I think, and Margie's finally persuaded me of this. It took me a while to get it. She kept talking to me about it. But I said, man, I got to, excuse me, I got to pray more. Uh, I got to get more ready. I got to do something. She goes, honey, it's not you. The people have to want it. And then I started to take a notice of something after she said that. When people come to me and they really respect the work of God in me and they come with a humble heart, they get clobbered every time with the Holy Ghost and things start to manifest. Every time. I've never seen it and I have never. I've even seen people that didn't know what was going to happen and they get clobbered. And then something shifts in their life and they move into higher things. But I've seen lots of people that come with their mind and a little bit of one knee's down, one knee's up, one's in the world, one's out. And they're like, well, let's see what he can do. Yeah. That mentality must go. Yeah. It must go. We have to start to have this. We have to fear the Lord in the right way. You understand? We don't fear judgment. We, we honor and understand that our Father is the God who made all things, and all things are going to return before Him to be judged by Him. And we, more than any other people, ought to have our knees down quickly. So we ought to come in and say, this is about the move of God. I'm not going to be distracted. Imagine you come in and you go, let's go. Like sometimes, I look across and I'll see Mike, or I'll see you know, Bill over there, and we're like, you know, and they, we got our emotions, right, Bill? It's like, we'll go. He gets, like, he gets this overwhelmed look on his face. <laughs> it's because he's been in the spirit. He knows what can happen. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. People who experience the spirit want the spirit. Yeah. Oh, come on, Jesus. Come on, can we agree that you're going to start showing up big? Come on, let's, let's show up big. Let's stop being little. Because you can have it when you believe it if you know you can have it when you believe. See, that wisdom, oh boy, I'm telling you. See, you got to know, it's not up to God. Oh boy. Carnal churches are always crying out to God to do something. God already did something. It's time for the church to arise and shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has arisen upon you. It has. So I got to come in and shake off the dust of the day and say, this is about honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is about honoring his Father, who is the God of all. I honor you in my heart. Knees down, quickly. Can everybody say knees down? All right, come on, let's become diligent in the things of God. Stop negotiating with God, whether you should or not. You think, what is your deal? Well, I'm so desperate for it to happen. I'm willing to compel you. Hmm. I'm not done. It says, uh, he says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And when Paul had laid hands upon them, in the whole, then the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with their tongues and prophesied. Now, when men were about, there were about 12 of them in all, and when he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, Paul did, um, persuading many concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way, I tell you now, hear me, people will come in here and leave and speak evil of us. It's no sign that we have a problem. It's plenty sign that we're doing the right thing. Now, because people speak evil of you doesn't mean you're doing the right thing. But I just want you to know, when people speak evil of us, it's no symbol of anything, and we got to cast it aside. In fact, rather, just to receive it as glory. Thank you, Lord, that we are worthy now to be persecuted with you concerning the faith. 
Amen. Right. So you have to prep yourself. These things are not generic, or excuse me, they are generic. They come. They're cyclical. When there's a move of God, things start happening in the house, then there's people who will go and speak evil, but then there's always a rising up and a multiplication of disciples, okay? And then something starts to happen in a big way, and then usually what happens, the leaders get stupid and do something dumb, and the whole thing falls apart. The Bible says, pray for those who are your leaders. We just prayed for our new president that's coming. And you say, I'm not praying for him. Well, there's your problem. You're in rebellion to God. That's your problem. When Barack Obama got in office, who's completely different the other way, I prayed for him. I pray for my leaders because God said to pray for your leaders, and that's it. But you also ought to pray for your leaders in the church. Pray for Pastor Keith and Lori. Pray for Margie and I. Pray for us that we will have the wisdom and the clarity of mind and to keep centered on the truth of God. If God says you ought to pray for your leaders, then your leaders need prayer. What if the people do what they're supposed to? But you got to get your knees down inside so that you can get your knees down outside. Yeah, you'll pray. All right, keep going real quick. And he says, uh, so then these guys hardened their heart and they went out speaking evil of them of the way before the multitude. So they spoke in front of the people. Then he departed from them, Paul departed from them, and withdrew the disciples reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. So I want you to hear this. I really think this is the word of the Lord to us. Paul did not ask the disciples if they want to come along with him. You didn't hear that, did you? It's right there. He withdrew the disciples. He says, come on, we're done here. And he left, and they all went with him. Disciples are connected to their leaders heart to heart, and it goes beyond any other connection there is. It is powerful. If it's correct... It is actually more powerful than family. It's It's more powerful than family. Family comes from the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God does not come from family. You got to know that. You all know how much I love Margie and my kids and my grandkids. You know that. But I know health in the family comes from the kingdom of God, not the other way around. And because we prioritize on the kingdom of God, we are not distracted by our children or distracted by our spouses or distracted from the will of God. We obey the will of God at all costs. Right. Right. The best husband is the one who obeys the will of God. The best wife is the one who obeys the will of God. The best children are the ones who obey the will of God. It is not counter family. It is the inspiration of a family. So, but we keep God in the driver's seat. Okay, so check it out. So he says he withdrew the disciples and reasoned with them daily in the school of Tyrannus, and this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in in Asia, this is Asia Minor, it says they heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Okay. So I see a pattern. I wrote it all down. I want to just read to you. We find disciples. We're going to find disciples. And God showed me there's a whole bunch of disciples in this community who are wandering right now. They don't have a home. They've been to this church, that church. Things have gone wrong. Stuff happened. They're wounded. They're hurt. But they still love God. In their heart, they're still saying, I love you. I serve you no matter what. And they don't know what to do. But they don't even know that we're ready for them. God's going to connect them to us. You watch and see. So we're going to run into disciples. But when we speak to them, God, through us, is going to clarify the word they received to them, and they're going to find other things that they could have received when they believed. And it's going to deliver them from the things that are harming them. Okay, that's going to happen. That's one. And then Paul laying hands upon them, and the thing that they now learn they could have he, by the will of God, gave to them. So there's the next step. The next step is that they're going to receive, through the laying on of hands, the impartation of spirit and life and ministry and life and church and life and everything that comes with it in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. All right, so he laid hands. And then they will begin to proclaim 
tongues and prophecy will begin to give them messages for the community about what is happening in the spirit realm. You understand? That's what it is. When the spirit comes upon you, it produces messages come out of you from heaven. You become a broadcaster, a proclaimer. And then the disciples are going to have to be pulled out of religion and out of different influences and out of certain fellowships of things in life that are harming their walk. There's a pattern here. I want you to see it. It's there. And they're going to be pulled aside because Jesus has need of them. And there's going to be a ministry training school. I mean, I just pictured, do you, know, do you know Paul never started a school before that? And I thought, why did he go and start a school right then? What compelled him? There's nowhere. You can't find it where God says, all right, Paul, I want you to start a school. It was the disciples. He hit me. hit me so hard. It was the disciples. These guys were so bright. These 12 were so faithful to the word, they heard the message proclaimed to them about Jesus Christ more highly than they ever heard it before. And they said, yes, we never heard of the Spirit, but we want the Spirit. They had an obedience, a bowed knee in their heart. There was something inside of those 12 that Paul saw. They immediately bowed their heart. The Spirit leaped on them. They began to speak in tongues. They began to prophesy and proclaim messages. And Paul, then, when those guys started getting persecuted by the rest of the way, of that religious crowd, he pulled them out of there and started a school. And that group of people reached the whole of Asia. Isn't that awesome? But this is a pattern. And then it goes on to say, if you can read on, it says, verse 11, for God working unusual miracles by the hands of Paul. Don't tell me there's not a difference between the people and their leaders. You'll find through the whole Bible, God dropping powerful things on Moses, powerful things on David, powerful things on the pastor, powerful things on the prophet, powerful things on the leaders. God anoints the leaders to do great things because that's his way. That's how he does it. He anoints fathers in the home to do what a mother can never do. Next time someone says, we want to honor the fathers, can you stand up your fathers? If you're a woman, do not stand up. You cannot. Be a, so why raise my kids with no father? I'm about you weren't their father. They're lacking what they needed. Yep. If you don't keep them in church and get them around men, they're going to lack the father. They've got to be around men who are going to help them grow up as men. Right. No woman can train a man to be a man, ever. Right. Zero. Right. Yep. And no man is ever going to train a woman to be a woman. Right. I'm not saying we can't aid them, teach them the word, help them to grow. But there's impartation from woman to woman. There's impartation from man to man. A man must be anointed in his home. He must be, or his leadership will lack. We don't have anything against a woman being as strong as she can be. Let a woman be as strong as she can be. In fact, our goal is to make her as strong as she can be. But if she's ahead of you, sir, you better get moving, getting those knees down on the carpet, son. Come on, get your knees on the carpet so you can rise up and become a leader that doesn't diminish her growth, but actually lifts her even higher. Okay, so he says God was working unusual miracles. Can you say unusual miracles? All right, so we got, we got the miracle pool yeah. Yeah. coming this Friday. We are fasting today. I hope you joined us. Look, if, if you never fasted before, at least pick a day tomorrow. Yeah. Or if you never fasted before and it's like, well, that's, I don't know how I ever did it. All right, then fast two meals. Yeah. But this is what a fast is. It is a vow that you make before God that I will sanctify myself for you. And whatever you set in between those goalposts, do not violate it or you'll pay. There's consequences for breaking that fast. You should never break your fast. Never. I had a woman say one time, I just got hungry, ate a little sandwich, and I went right back on my fast. I said, that's not fasting. That's eating. We can't make up rules. Fasting is fasting. You could fast TV. You could fast a phone. You could fast solid food. You could fast everything but water. Drink water. There's a lot of ways you could fast. 
But the whole thing is about, God, I am bringing my heart before you, and I want you to do something that I'm after, and so I'm going to focus my attention. Fasting does not persuade God. Fasting sanctifies your mind and soul and sets your mind, aligns you with God. Because you're focusing. You're focusing. So make sure you focus. I think there's a lot of things you should, you, you should give up during fasting. Yeah. Entertainment, video games, all that kind of stuff. I think we should give it up. Yesterday was extremely hard with the elections. Wow. So much stuff. So it says, he did unusual signs. They took handkerchiefs and aprons from Paul's body and sick and the diseases left them, and evil spirits went out of them. And some were itinerant or wandering Jewish exorcists, took it upon themselves to name the name of the Lord Jesus and those who had evil spirits, saying, we adjure you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So there wasn't something they had. Their knees weren't down. You got it. Don't pray with my faith. Develop your own. Develop your own. Your knees got to go down. That's where it is, right there. Yeah. He says, and they adjured it. And then also, there were seven sons of Sceva. Sceva means left handed. And Jesus is the right hand of the Lord. It's funny. Interesting, right? The anointing of Jesus Christ is the right hand of the Lord. This guy's name, Sceva, is left hand. They were coming another avenue. They weren't coming the way of the Lord. They're coming a different way. These seven sons of Sceva, Jewish chief priests who did so. And then the evil spirits answered and said, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? I want you to know this. The next thing you need to realize is that the demons will learn who you are. The demons know who the man of God is. Did you ever wonder why so many men of God fall? Because every demon in the community knows the man of God in that community. They know the man of God in that community. They are working and trying to find a way to cripple and stop the man of God. Don't fear them. Stay in God. They have no power over us. But you've got to be aware of their devices and you've got to make a stand in your heart. But the beauty of being known is when you enter the scene, they know they're in trouble if you say, Jesus loves you. Because power backs what you're doing because it goes beyond the words that you're speaking. It's not memorization of Christian ideas. It's interaction of spirit and life. Amen. Amen. You with me? Okay, so then the special miracles happen. And then there's always going to come those who manufacture those imitators. It's a, they're, they're, there's those who will come and they'll try to imitate and they're not really of us. You understand? So be aware. These things are coming. They're coming. They're going to be a part of us too. Evil spirits know the man of God. And <coughs> the last thing that is here, it says very clearly there that when uh, these special miracles were happening and, and the, the seven sons of Sceva began to try to drive out the demons, and the demons, it says, they, had they, they were in a man, one man, and they leaped on all seven sons of this Jewish guy. And they, this guy beat them up because he was empowered by the demonic presence so much. He beat up all seven guys and tore their clothes off them and they ran out naked. It says the report went all across the land and there was great fear. And it says then the magicians and the people of curious arts and magic stuff all started coming and bringing their books and their training devices and they brought it all together and they publicly in front of them all burned it all and said this is all not a god yeah. and they followed paul and they followed the move of god i want you to know that god's intention does not stop with us right. he has a lot of people he wants to reach can you stand <laughs>